The Mitsubishi A6M, better known as the Zero, was a marvel of Japanese engineering. Lauded for its agility and speed, it was the pride of the Imperial Japanese Navy and a symbol of Japan's air supremacy in the early years of World War II. But the story of the A6M Zero isn't just about triumph, it's also about innovation and eventually its devastating fall. The rise and fall of the Zero, a 6M and its struggle for Pacific supremacy. In the late 1930s, Japan faced the daunting task of designing a fighter that could defend the skies over their newly claimed territories. The aircraft needed to be light, fast, and agile while boasting an impressive range, an ambitious goal for Japanese engineers. The result was the A6M Zero, at less than 6,000 pounds and capable of flying up to 1,200 miles on a single tank of fuel, the Zero was revolutionary. Its designers made significant sacrifices in armor and armament, opting for speed and maneuverability instead. By the time it entered service, the Zero had no equal in the skies over the Pacific. When the Zero first appeared in combat in China, it stunned Allied pilots and ground forces alike. By the time Pearl Harbor was attacked in December 1941, the Zero had established a fearsome reputation. With a maximum speed of 331 miles per hour and unmatched agility, it outclassed every Allied fighter it encountered. During the initial campaigns in the Pacific, the Zero enabled Japan to launch surprise attacks, overwhelming defenses, and clearing the skies for advancing Japanese fleets. American forces were left scrambling to counter this new threat, but as the war progressed, the Zero's weaknesses became apparent. Sacrifices made for maneuverability, like its lack of armor and self-sealing fuel tanks, made the Zero dangerously vulnerable in extended dogfights. In pivotal battles such as Midway and the Guadalcanal campaign, the Zero's limitations became evident as newer, tougher American aircraft like the F-6F Hellcat and the F-4U Corsair took to the skies. Allied pilots learned how to counter the Zero using hit-and-run tactics that took advantage of the Zero's lack of protective armor and limited durability. Soon, the once-dominant fighter was struggling to hold its own. Japan's manufacturing capacity lagged behind that of the Allies. With limited resources, they couldn't afford to upgrade or replace the Zero quickly. Meanwhile, the Allies were producing new fighters with improved armor, heavier guns, and more powerful engines in staggering quantities. By 1944, the Zero had become obsolete. Its performance, once feared, could no longer match the sheer power of the advanced American fighters. And as Japan's position in the Pacific grew increasingly desperate, Zeros were increasingly repurposed for kamikaze missions, marking a tragic end for one of Japan's most iconic planes. The Zero's story is one of brilliance and limitation, a plane that rose to unmatched heights only to be brought down by its own design and the relentless advance of technology. It symbolizes both the ingenuity and the tragedy of a nation at war. The A6M Zero is remembered today as a testament to Japanese engineering and a symbol of the early Pacific War. While it ultimately couldn't keep up with the demands of prolonged conflict, its influence on fighter design and military strategy endures. The A6M Zero, an aircraft that left a legacy in aviation history, its legend flying high, even as it fell from grace. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more on aviation history.